Hi everybody, Zeev Simon here. I'm the creator of Surgical Master. Welcome to this video, and this one is part two of the implant placement dilemma that I presented to you in the previous one, where I showed you two options for an implant placement in an upper first molar position. And if you didn't see it, go back and watch it so you can understand a little bit more what the exact dilemma was all about, because what I showed is actually a very simple case where you have abundance of bone and enough space between the roots and enough space to the sinus to place an implant with quite a bit of leeway. And what I was exploring was should the implant be placed perpendicular to the occlusal plane or should it be parallel to the roots? And it may not be as simple as you may think it is. And if you're like me interested in understanding things always more and keep learning, the videos on implant placement dilemmas will be great for you. Very, very interesting to me. I learned a lot. And there was a lot of engagement online, mostly on Facebook. And I also communicated personally with a few uh, prosthodontists, uh, lab technicians, very experienced clinicians that are involved day in, day out with implant placement and implant restoration. So I, re I really went to the best, to people that know a whole lot more than me. And I also brought this dilemma up to the surgical master community and, and, and social media. And in this video, I wanted to share some of the opinions with you. And in the next videos, I'm going to also share the results of the survey, where at the moment we have over 900 dentists participating and choosing between A and, a and B. And I'm also going to give you my own opinion, uh, what I think it is. And uh, I, I know it's going to be very interesting to you. So uh, I'm going to start by uh, sharing some of my personal email communication with a few prosthodontists and very uh, experienced clinicians. I'm not going to mention names because I didn't get the permission to do that. So I'm just going to talk about what they communicated with me. So basically, I sent an email, uh, the exact same post uh, that you saw on Facebook, option A, option B, which one is the best? Not too many details because I wa really wanted to get to the essence of it. So the first prosthodontist that uh, replied to my email uh, said that he, you know, he loves a screw-retained crown, so that, that's good. But in regards to the position of the implant, he prefers uh, usually to have the implant position perpendicular to the occlusal plane without explaining why. Uh, and he also mentioned that you, know, you can come up with some scenarios where this rule is broken. So not 100%, not but he prefers uh, a. The second prosthodontist basically said, uh, you know, we don't always have the bone and the luxury to place an implant in these situations, which is true. And he felt, you know, there's a really minor uh, change between the two. He felt that in most situations, we don't have the luxury. And sometimes we place it perpendicular, sometimes parallel with the roots. And either way, it will all work. Smiley face. So no, no preference, A and B. Okay. Another email from an experienced general practitioner in, in surgery and restoration um, basically mentioned that he would like to consider the direction of the force on the implant. So basically looking at the uh, loading along the axis of the implant, basically implying that the position of the implant should be perpendicular to the occlusal plane, again, because of axial loading. So we have now, at least an, an, an explanation, and you, you may agree or not, but we have an explanation why uh, this practitioner chose option A. Another prosthodontist chose option B because the straight up and down, basically perpendicular, may jeopardize the root of the premolar. So his preference is angulating the implant parallel with the roots for safety reasons. Number two, he mentions that restorative access is facilitated. So I'm getting no more opinions that, you know, we have to consider safety, which is important, but also the restoration. And I'm going to get more into details in the next few opinions. So another opinion from a general practitioner that uh, talks about uh, choosing the position of the implant that is going to be along the long axis of the working cusps. So very detailed occlusal consideration, but neither, <laughs> he doesn't care how it looks like radiographically. So I couldn't get a straight answer A or B, but occlusion seems to make a difference. 
another general practitioner basically said they're the same, A or B, but consider the proximal contacts. Consider the draw of the restoration. I assume a screw-retained restoration. So this is the first time I'm hearing the word draw, contact points, serving a partial, um, making sure that the restoration has the longest contacts and the best contours to prevent food impaction. So that's a step further. So not just the safety, not just the occlusal loading, but also creating better contacts and a better uh, restoration with better contours. So we're getting more into details. And who is better to ask than a lab technician about what's the ideal implant position from a, from a lab technician point of view? So uh, my technician says, you know, make it parallel to the roots. The more parallel it is, uh, to the roots and probably to the adjacent contacts, the better path of insertion of the future crown. And we assume screw retained. And that's such an important piece of information that I was not taught. And it teaches us how important it is to consult your lab technician when you are planning your implant surgery and your implant restoration. And lo don't leave them out of the loop because they are actually making the restoration. They know more. And in this case, in this question, A or B, um, my lab technician is choosing B because B gives you a better path of insertion of the crown. Another good friend of mine from San Francisco, also very experienced, says, you know, conceptually, we should load the implants along the long axis, what we call axial loading, but in reality, it doesn't really happen. And the direction of the implant, he doesn't really care about as long as the implant is positioned in the direction of the path of insertion of the crown. Again, the issue of draw and creating better contacts and proximal areas uh, seems to be very important. The last opinion from a prosthodontist basically said, you know, both options are acceptable. It's important to be perpendicular to the occlusal plane, I assume because of axial loading, but the path of insertion, not related to the roots. Actually, the roots have nothing to do with it because the adjacent teeth can be restored. Don't look at the roots, look at the adjacent crowns to make sure that there's a good path of insertion. And of course, safety and distance from the adjacent roots uh, are important. And the roots are not necessarily aligned with the long axis of the teeth, okay? So roots, uh, root consideration uh, has to do with safety, not with the uh, restorative aspect of it. And it's not accurate to determine the occlusal plane based on a 2D image. I totally agree. I gave you very little information, just a couple of images from my software. And I totally agree that I didn't, I didn't give enough information uh, to study this case. But uh, this again was done on purpose because I wanted to understand what is the opinion of experienced clinician clinicians in regards to the a or B question. And this video is getting a little bit too long. Uh, I took a little bit too much time. So what I, I'll do, I'm going to stop here and I'm going to share the social media interactions and opinion, which again, giving us a few more pieces of the puzzle. So we have a better understanding. So from my email communication with my friends, with my colleagues, we learned that the implant needs to be positioned safely, uh, without causing damage to the adjacent roots away from the sinus. Um, that axial loading matters, meaning perpendicular to the occlusal plane, or that axial loading doesn't, doesn't matter. Okay, so we have a little bit of a conflict here. And a very important piece of information is that the implant should be positioned parallel to the proximal contact, so there's a draw of a screw-retained crown to allow you to have proper contacts and embrasures, so a, a restorative consideration. So we're getting some details. We are starting to solve this puzzle. And in the next video, I'm going to show you the social media interactions that is, again, fascinating and interacting with a lot of people from all over the world. I'm going to publish the survey results, and I'm going to give you my opinion. It's going to be great. So if you didn't fill out the survey yet, 
go ahead, click the link survey. survey. It should be somewhere uh, with this post or email me. I'll send it to you. It's only one question, A or B. Send it to a colleague. Let's get as many opinions as we can. We're now at 900. Hopefully we get to 1,000 or more. And we can really dig into this question. We can learn more. I promise you this is going to be very useful to you. And we all will get better and understand more about what we're doing in regards to implant positioning. See you at the next Implant Dilemma video. Mm -hmm.